Welcome back to Nerd News Today. I'm Matthew, and today we are looking at some brand new Ghostbusters action figures from Hasbro. Now, it wasn't that long ago that we looked at the figures in the Plasma Collection, which was Hasbro's six inch versions of the Ghostbusters, and today we are jumping down to something a little bit more kid friendly, but also still very nostalgic. In this video, we are taking a look at the new Ghostbusters Fright Features action figures, and those figures are of the four Ghostbusters themselves. Now, if Fright Features sounds familiar to you, that's probably because you're an 80s kid. And one of the early real Ghostbuster toy lines was the Fright Features, which basically had the different Ghostbusters having little expressions on their faces changing when you squeeze their legs or their arms, things like that. This time around, the Fright Feature is not on the Ghostbusters themselves, but it's on their little ghost friends that is packaged with each figure. Now, I first saw these figures back at Toy Fair 2020, and I was very intrigued by them because, yeah, these are very nostalgic looking. They reminded me a lot of those original toys, but they definitely do have some differences of their own, and we're going to talk about that as we get deeper into this video. But first things first, let us discuss this packaging here, and I'm surprised by how small the packaging is. And small isn't necessarily a bad thing. I like compact toys, and these are definitely packaged very compact, but they're really small when you go back in time and look at the real Ghostbusters toys and their packaging. Those things had huge blisters. They were enormous. Basically, they're double the size of this as ter in terms of just height alone. And even in the width, they're still much wider than these figures are here. Is that good? Is that bad? It's just a difference. I don't really think it really affects much of these toys whatsoever. Again, I do like that they are smaller because they're easier to stack, easier to display if you are a mint on card collector, which I'm not anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. But for those who are, you know, they're a lot smaller than what you might remember as a kid. The patching themselves also, there really isn't much to discuss with them. They're pretty plain. It's for the most part almost like 90% window here and very little actual blister on this. All the figures have a really nice illustration of each of the Ghostbusters. And I think actually the illustration is, is really spectacular. I kind of wish that the figures looked as good as that illustration does, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. The back of the packages also, there's like nothing really discussed there either. It's basically just got a one sentence bio about each of the Ghostbusters and then it's repeated in multiple different languages. And then it shows you how the fright feature works on whatever ghost that comes with. Now, an important thing to note also about these figures, there's actually two variants in this wave here. And the difference of those two figures are actually Peter and Winston. So the figures are identical. It's the ghosts that are different. So Wave 1A, Peter and Winston both have different ghosts packaged with them, whereas Wave 1B has Slimer and the Terror Dog. Now, which wave is going to be more valuable in time? Which one's going to be more collectible? Uh, you know, I thought in my head that maybe Wave 1A would be the more sought one because it's the earlier wave. But then again, this wave has got Slimer and the Terror Dog, so that might make it the more collectible wave too. I, I don't really know what the answer is here. So my suggestion to you guys is buy both and just play it safe. But that's enough about this packaging. I'm getting some pretty heavy psychokinetic readings from all these figures. So let's go ahead and get them out of these boxes and take a closer look at them. All right, and we're back. And here are the Ghostbusters Fright Features figures out of the packaging. So the first thing that's kind of obvious is that they all share the same bodies. Uh, you can see across the board, they are all, it looks like 100% identical. Like I don't think there's any difference in them in their height. Um, no, there's, there's like a little bit of difference in height, but that's kind of weird. Unless I'm wrong, I mean, it seems like... No, they're, they're pretty close in height. I think it's all pretty much just a uniform. It's all kind of the same. I and mean, that makes sense that they're all basically the same bodies. That's pretty much what they've done in the past with modern Ghostbuster toys. It's one of those things that has disappointed me also, because when the real Ghostbusters toys came out from Kenner, they were all, for the most part, different body types. They all were something unique. Whereas, you look at any of the Ghostbuster figures that came out in the past, like, 20 years, and they're always identical. It's a cost-cutting measure for sure. It makes sense to do it. I just kind of wish they went a little bit of the extra mile to do something a little bit different, because... I mean, yeah, they did have some slightly different looks among them. And I mean, with the Kenner toys, they made Ray a little bit chubbier. They made Egon a little bit taller. They did things differently. So it would have been nice to have something like that here, too. And I'll show you guys the back of the figures as well, just so you can see. I mean, yeah, there's absolutely no change. I mean, the one upside about these figures, as opposed to what the Kenner ones were in the 80s, is that these are much, much closer to what they looked like in the movies, as opposed to the Kenner line that was the cartoons. This has got the correct color uniform. It's got the correct web belts you guys can see there. We've got proper straps for the backpack, for the proton pack. The uniforms are definitely way more accurate than those Kenner toys were as well. So it is a nice upgrade, nice modernization of those things. So let's talk about these faces, though. And the faces kind of irk me a little bit. And the reason why is because I think I mentioned this earlier in the video, too. But I really like these illustrations that were on the front of all the figures. And I mean, I think the cartoons here are just like really nice. This is the one of Winston. I think this one looks really great, actually. It looks just like Ernie Hudson. And all of these cartoons, all these illustrations are really good, and they look a lot like the people they're supposed to look like. I mean, like, here is the Egon Spangler. I think that's a really good cartoon of him, too. Same thing with the Bill Murray. Same thing with the Dan Aykroyd face. I think these illustrations are spot on, and I wish the toys looked as good as these illustrations do, because they don't. They just flat out do not look as good. Like, there's an actual resemblance to the likenesses of the actors that's on those illustrations that are not really represented here in these figures. It's like the tiniest bit 
of that cartoon, of that caricature. And granted, yes, it is a caricature, but as a caricature, it should resemble who it's supposed to be. These faces don't really do that. It's like the most bare minimum of that likeness. And they are heavily stylized, yes, but heavily stylized should still imply that there is some likeness going on here. And I don't think these have that. If the heads looked as good as the drawings did, man, I would love these a lot more, but they don't. But that said, I still think the faces aren't bad. I still like them. They do have some personality, just not as much as those wonderful illustrations do. Now, we can't talk about Ghostbusters toys without talking about one of the most important features, and that is the Proton Pack. And again, if we're going to compare these to the old Kenner figures, these are, are pretty awesome, actually. I don't know which one I prefer, but in terms of accuracy, you cannot beat the accuracy of this version here. I mean, you can see it. It's got all of the elements of the proper Proton Pack. And as opposed to the Kenner Packs, which had a piece of string connecting the pack to the Natrona wand, this is all one piece of kind of softer plastic. I mean, this is pretty firm, the pack part, but this is flexible. And as you already saw when I turned Winston over before, they have the holes in the back, which is how their packs will slide in, just like this over here. So let's go ahead and see how that fits. And boom, super easy. And as I did that, by the way, I noticed a really cool little detail. I didn't even notice before. Uh, this is cool. Winston's hair is actually movie accurate. How old in the first movie? It's got the part on the side here. Uh, that is a good touch, actually, which makes me e feel even more sad that their likenesses are not a little bit better. So the packs go on really easy. I'm going to put the packs on everybody just to make sure that they all fit just fine. It's cool because it's actually giving me some nostalgia of me putting on the Proton Packs, the original toys. Granted, the pegs aren't nearly as long as they were back with those first Kenner figures, but it, it's giving me some of those good childhood feels. There we go. That's how that looks. Now let's get the guns in their hands also. And while I'm doing this, I guess I can talk about the articulation a little bit because there isn't much to talk about. I think they only have five points here because uh, it's just a head that can turn left to right, which is very stiff, not ball jointed. Shoulders go up and down and the legs go up and down and that's it. So five points of articulation, which is pretty classic nowadays. And that's also accurate to what the Kenner figures had too. So that's how our figures look with the proton gun in their hands and their short wand, wherever you want to call it. But for Egon, I'm actually going to try and do something different because, you, as you guys can see in the Proton Pack, there is a little spot where you should be able to slide your gun on, and the Proton Wand does have that. So my question is, can we actually get it the correct way? Can we get it the way it's meant to be, which is upside down, handle first? And can we do it without totally damaging the toy because this hose is so rubbery? Uh, so yeah, it does snap in very easily, but I'm trying to get that hose to be looking a little bit less awkward. So that's how it looks. The Proton Gun does, in fact, fit, and that's the way it should be. But because this wand, but because the hose is so rubbery and soft, uh, it kind of bends like this and doesn't look too good. And I don't think you can do much about that. Like maybe we can get it to stay up here. Uh, yeah, that's about as close as it gets, but it falls right back into place. So, you know, unfortunately, I think you have to have them holding the wand or else it's going to just always look a little funny. And that hose is going to always be in their faces. So let me put this on Egon's hand. So again, points of articulation, you know, it's identical to what we had as kids with Kenner. And keep in mind, these are $10 figures. So... You know, I'm not expecting them to be, like, ball-jointed everywhere. All right, so that's the Ghostbusters themselves, but let's talk about the Fright Features, because the Fright Features are their little friends, their little ghosts over here. So there's a Terror Dog, here is Slimer, here's whatever the heck it is that Ray has, a Volva Ghost, I don't quite know. And here is Donald Trump Ghost, because he's a little orange turd. So, how do these things work? Well, there's a little button on the back, and I guess that's what you do. So Terror Dog can roar. This guy here just should pop open, I guess, in theory. Oh, there we go, all right. That should just pop open and ta-da, you've got that horrible looking thing here. Let's see, Slimer has a button, of course, on his butt. Of course he does. Pop open Slimer and you expose his brain in his mouth, which is actually really disgusting. Inside his brain he has little chunks of pizza, which is just, yeah, really weird. I feel like this, I can't tell if it's a little Slimer or what in there, but that's just kind of bizarre. Now let's try this little orange monstrosity here. And same thing with this orange guy, he's got a little button on his butt as well, so we shoot that open. And that one seems to be a little busted, maybe. I might have a dud here in my hands. It doesn't want to actually work. Oh, the head goes up, too. Maybe that's what it is. And that's what that looks like. So, you know, as far as the little ghosts go, they're cute. I kind of wish they were the old transparent ones, though. I used to love those. Uh, they're just one tone, one color. They're really cool, though. These are, these are good, but they definitely feel a little too kid-friendly for me. Now, one of the last things here I want to do is I want to compare them with some of the Plasma Collection, because that's the higher-end figures. So I'm going to go ahead and swap out Peter and Ray. And let's bring in the six inch plasma versions, see how they scale up and see how they look. So there we go. Obviously the plasma collection is the higher end version. They're gonna be better looking, better articulated, better everything. Surprisingly, not that much of a difference in the height, just everything else. Yeah, not really too much else to say about these guys. Uh, you know, they all look pretty decent here together. 
Uh, but you know, again, $20 is what that'll get you versus $10. So that's a little bit of a difference there. But overall, that is kind of the important thing to note is that these are $10 figures. So you can't really expect, you know, super amazing quality or super, anything super duper crazy here. I think for 10 bucks, they're fine. And what is really nice also is there is an Ecto-1 that's in scale with these figures and that should be coming out probably in the next few months, a little bit closer to the movie's release. So brand new Ecto-1 should fit all these guys. As far as I know, also, this Ecto-1 is going to have for the first time an actual like proton pack space or like a little rack to put your proton packs on. That will be very exciting. So it's nice to have just classic style Ghostbusters toys done in this modern way. Are there things I wish were done a little bit differently? Yes, but what we have is what we have. And another cool thing too is we're going to have the other four characters coming soon also, again, close to the movie. So we're going to have eight toys by the end of this all on the same scale. And that's pretty exciting. Brand new Ghostbuster toys in the style of the classic figures. I think that's still pretty great overall, and I'm pretty excited about that. So that's our look at the Ghostbusters Fright Features figures. If you want to order any of these for yourself, we're going to have links to Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Store, Amazon, and wherever else you can find them in our YouTube description. Using those links helps support this channel here and helps us keep making awesome videos for you guys. So until next time, I'm Matthew, and we're ready to believe you.